What do you really need to get started in welding? You'll notice a lot of the tools I'll be showing are from Harbor Freight. You know, lots of people dog on them, but they do have a good tool selection for, I would say, the home shop or DIYer type person. Now, I get asked all the time, what welder should I pick up? And that's a loaded question because it depends on everyone's situation. So just to help everyone out, I'm going to put up this chart from ESOB to help everyone select a process to start with. Now, if you just got some odd and end projects and you don't want to break the bank, then pick up a cheap stick welder or a flux core welder, and that will get you through almost all of your projects. Don't feel like you need to spend thousands to get started in welding. Not very many welders come with rods or wire, so second on the list is just that. If you ended up going with a flux core welder, do not buy the shiny copper looking stuff. This is solid core wire for MIG welding. Make sure it is a gasless flux core or inner shield wire. It is more expensive. And as far as a size, I would say just offhand, go with a 0.030 or 30 thousandths of an inch. It will get you through a majority of your projects. If your welds aren't turning out that great, lots of people like to blame the wire, but I've ran a ton of different brands and I found that the main cause is actually mostly either your speed, stick out, or technique. I've got other videos showing details about that kind of stuff. So point is, if you find some cheap stuff, pick it up and it will probably do just fine. And for rods, I would always have on hand 332nd inch 6013 or 7018 rods. They are just great general purpose rods. Well, with your wire and welder, you could just close your eyes and have at it, but I would highly suggest getting an auto darkening helmet. No, you don't need, you know, a $400 Miller. Really any auto darkening helmet will do just fine. When I started out, I just used some leather work gloves and they worked great, but most people don't know that uh, welding gloves have a couple purposes. First of all, if you're flux core or stick welding, it throws out a lot of spatter. So the extra long sleeves help out with that. Also, welding throws out UV rays. So if I'm just doing, you know, a small tack job here and there, I'll have at it. If not, I do like having a welding jacket or at a minimum long sleeves. Now I don't know too many projects that just have perfectly cut pieces ready to be welded up. Thus what I would consider a must is an angle grinder. It is my most widely used metalworking tool and that's because you use it before and after actually welding. Let me tell you how frugal I was when I started out. Harbor Freight had electric angle grinders for 10 bucks and they also had the pneumatic ones for five bucks. I'll just say right now with the little pancake compressor and three inch cutoff discs, it did not take me long to realize it took forever to make those cuts. It was not worth it and I bit the bullet and spent the 10 bucks as it was for back in the day when they were orange, my first angle grinder that still works today. Lesson is go out and buy an electric angle grinder, you'll be happy. These are all four and a half inch angle grinders. It's a very common size and you'll see that I have a bunch of them. And that's because I don't like changing out the attachments. So what I would say is a must have is at least pick up one angle grinder with some cutoff discs. These allow you to actually cut your metal. I'd also pick up a grinder wheel. This takes out a lot of metal and it cleans up those really ugly welds if you're just starting out, gives you another shot at it. Flap or flapper disc. This is pretty much like sandpaper on steroids. It cleans up the welds uh, really nicely and it's just not as aggressive as a grinder wheel. It gives you that nice polished finish if you get some higher grit as well. And lastly, the wire wheel. This cleans up and preps the material really well. Also, if you're doing flux core, it leaves a lot of dust and spatter. So a quick brush with this will clean it right up. You now have everything to cut, prep, and weld your material. So all of the items from this point on are really just kind of the extra bells and whistles. They are what will help you get either a nicer weld or help do the job quicker. I will add that if you are making a lot of straight cuts, you may want to invest in a chop saw or a band saw. I had to make 100 plus cuts for my railing, and this 14 inch abrasive chop saw was well worth it. I'll admit it, I would love, you know, a $10,000 fireball fixture table. If you don't know what a fixture table is, it's just a really nice welding table, keeps everything straight. Now for me in my garage, I actually made this welding table just out of some flat bar. Works great for what I need it for. Now if you were just starting out, you don't really need a welding table. The concrete floor does just fine. Now that is assuming you aren't trying to do high precision type tolerances right off the bat. 
Now something that does help out a lot that is cheap enough to get would be magnets and clamps. Magnets actually hold your piece in place, um, either at 90s or 45s. It holds it in place just enough so then you can tack it, then you take the magnets off and you have at your weld. Now I actually designed my table to work with these cheap Harbor Freight clamps. And they work great to hold your piece down because you'll notice if you're starting out welding, as it's solidifying or cooling, your metal will actually shift on you and move. So the more you have it secured or clamped down, the less it will actually move and distort on you. Now these two items were good enough that I actually did a dedicated video for it. It's anti-spatter spray and nozzle gel. Flux core welding throws a lot of spatter, so a quick spray with this makes it clean up really nice and easy. And nozzle gel, you actually dip your contact tip into it every once in a while, and it helps the buildup of any of that spatter, and it just brushes right away. The nozzle gel is good enough that this is actually the only contact tip I've ever had with my titanium welder, and I've had it for over three years now. Last couple items as you're headed down the aisle, I'd pick up some welpers or welding pliers. They're great for MIG and flux core welding, wire brush, and a chipping hammer for sure if you are stick welding. That uh, slag builds up a lot with from those rods and so you can easily chip it away with one of those. Head on out, pick up all of it or maybe just the bare essentials and stay tuned because next video I'll be going over your first welding project. See you next time.